Well, welcome everyone to our next broadcast of Jim and Java. Well, let's jump right into it today. The first question we have today is from Tim M. from Georgia who asks, if I could focus in on just one thing this year in 2021, what do you recommend that would be? Well, Tim, that's an easy one. I would really focus in on relationships. Relationship building is so critical and so fundamental to everything we do. It's one of the key pillars of everything within development and fundraising. Finding those individuals who are interested in what you do and interested in what you work and communicate more often with people. You probably, if, if you're like other organizations, other nonprofit organizations, you probably have a list of individuals that are either helping you individually or as an organization. Normally, I focus in on what I refer to as the 80-20 principle, that 20% of your money comes from 80% of your dollars. One of the most valuable lessons that I learned early on when I was getting involved in fundraising and I was just scrambling like a madman trying to develop deep and lasting relationships with all the people on my mailing list, I had someone who brought to my attention the 80-20 principle that 20% of those people could be our goal, that could be our target, that we, if I just spent a good majority of my time with those 20% of the people that bring in 80% of the income, then I would be making a dramatic difference. And I took that to heart and I started to call those people, I started to write those people, and I started to visit those people. And I was shocked at what the difference that was made by focusing in on those few people. Now, in the beginning, it wasn't easy because I really felt like, uh, number two, I was neglecting the 80% of those people, but primarily, I was a little bit worried about treating people differently. I was worried that just focusing in on 20% of the people, uh, I would be kind of sharing or making people feel like they were, that some were valuable and others weren't. And it was shared to me that it's just good stewardship of our time, our energy, and our resources to focus in on those on the critical few those individuals who are going to have the greatest impact. Now, I'm under no delusion that I've got a, everyone on our mailing list loves us, prays for us, cares about us, and, and that we are the first thing on people's minds. But I know that there are that critical few that do really care about us and what we're doing. And I had to determine who were those people. Now, determining those people by dollar value and how much they give is not the most accurate predictor of who cares about you and who doesn't. I always think about the uh, story of the widow's mite, the woman who gave all that she had to be able to uh, make a difference. And I think about those people who don't have a lot to give, but they make a sacrificial gift. And I'm not trying to neglect those people at all. But a majority of the time I've found that people do focus in on those things that they care about. Remember the principle that says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. So those individuals who care about us the most tend to give us the most dollars. They can, tend to give on a monthly basis. They tend to give the most in the most frequent way possible. Uh, they're giving 8, 9, 10, 12 14 times a year, but they also seem to be the ones who give the largest dollar amount as well too. And so I focused in on those 20% and I was just amazed over the years to see the difference that was made. Now in the 80% that still existed, 
I didn't stop communicating with those people. I still continued to communicate with those people on a regular basis, sending them monthly letters, communicating with those people, sending e-blasts. But it was the 20% that I spent more time with. I called them regularly. I emailed them regularly. I visited with those people regularly. And it made a huge difference. And that's what I would recommend for you, Tim, is I'd recommend that you focus in on those individuals who are going to have the greatest impact and it will maximize your time and you won't feel overwhelmed. Hopefully that helps you. Let's get to the second question. The second question comes from Mark J. in Virginia. Does it look like we're going to be able to do live events in 2021? Well, Mark, thanks for asking that question. And, you know, it's really hard to tell. Every city, every location, every state is different. And you may live in a less restrictive state. And if you do, the likelihood that you'll be able to do something will greatly increase. I've been talking with individuals that, uh, that I work with that live in Florida, live in Texas, live in Georgia, live in South Carolina, and they're thinking about live events right now. In fact, the venues where they live are open to gatherings of 150, 200 in a socially distanced manner. Rule of thumb in a lot of those cities is that they're willing to go to a capacity of about, or go to about 25% of what their capacity is. So I would really look to see if there are venues in, in your city that are willing to open up to 25% capacity. Uh, I don't question it all at this point. I did for a while whether there are individuals willing out, willing to come out to events. Um, that, that to me is a given now. I believe that there are individuals who come out to your event. You just need to find out who those people are. And again, I'm not advocating at all an event that doesn't include social distancing, masks, and every necessary precaution. What I'm saying is with those precautions, put out there the possibility to your donor base that are there people who are interested and would they be willing to come out? We know that people are getting real tired of the isolation and they could use the social interaction, they could use the conversation around the tables with individuals of like-mindedness and that uh, they would they would just value from hearing really some hope and your organization is probably still doing some great things and still probably bringing a lot of hope to a lot of people and it's time for you to bring some of that hope to your donors. So from my standpoint, I believe we'll be getting there. How soon we'll be getting there? Well, I'm testing the waters myself. I've got uh, a few dinners uh, in April. I've got a large major donor gathering that I'm trying to do in at the end of April that has been shifted from California to Florida. So I'm venturing out there trying to make it work myself. Uh, but I find that in some locations, uh, I just was talking to uh, a colleague in uh, New Jersey in, and they um, the hotel isn't even open yet that they want to go to. They haven't opened back up again. So their April event is probably looking more like May or June this year rather than the early part of April. But, um, but you know, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm venturing out there and trying my best to see if we can make this work. So, Mark, I hope that helps you. And uh, please watch my, uh, my earlier episode of Jim and Java, and I address those issues with you. Our last question for this episode is from Sue G. in Pennsylvania. She asks, how, how can I go about finding major donors for my ministry? Well, Sue, that's a great question, and a lot of people have asked me that question. Finding major donors is never easy, and finding donors in particular in this day and age is not easy as well, too. But you must venture out and do what you can to find and, and cultivate relationships with individuals. Finding major donors takes a lot of time, takes a lot of energy, and takes a lot of footwork. You've got to get out and get out into the real world and not sit behind your desk and expect to find donors and even find major donors. That's just not going to happen. What you're going to have to do is 
you're going to have to go to your people who are current owners and see if they're willing to introduce you to individuals who they know. That's going to be the best way for you to get to meet major donors and get new donors. So introduce, having individuals introduce you to their friends is going to be an effective way to do that. Now, introducing, having people introduce you to their friends can oftentimes be a little uncomfortable for those partners. So I recommend a couple different ways of doing this. I would recommend either the individual write a letter, write an email, or call the donor that or the potential donor to call to see if they would be willing to get together with me. So in other words, Fred, Joe, uh, we work together, we're colleagues. I'd like to introduce you to Jim Dempsey. He's uh, with an organization that's making a difference in our community, making a difference in our world. I'd like for you to meet with him. Would you be willing to uh, have some time to, to take some time to meet with him? Or, hey, Joe, I'd like to actually go with you and Jim to lunch, and uh, I can tell you as well what, I've, what uh, Linda and I have done in helping Jim and his organization. So there's a number of ways that you can get to meet people, but generally referrals tend to be one of the best ways. Uh, in our YouTube channel, you'll find a video called Getting More Referrals, and it, I'd really recommend that video because I outline all the different ways to get referrals and to get new donors. Uh, but people introducing you to someone else is, uh, or your current donors introducing you to potential donors, is really going to be your best way to, to get new donors and especially to get major donors. Now, to focus specifically on getting major donors, and in my world, I'm assuming that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 and above for every organization, for every individual, it's different. For you, that could be 500. For you, that could be 5,000. But generally, a gift of $1,000 or more either qualifies for a mid-donor or a major donor. And what I usually have found over the years is that people associate with individuals of the same socioeconomic class. And so if you have an attorney, a doctor, a business person who currently gives you $1,000, they may have a friend, uh, a colleague that they associate with who make, you know, are, they might be a, a doctor themselves, they might be a, an attorney themselves, or a business person, they may be in the same practice as your donor, and in all likelihood, they might have the same capacity to give what your donor currently does. Now, they're probably nowhere near as, as connected, uh, their heart is not where your current donor is, because they really have no understanding of who your organization is and your donor's been giving to you for quite some time. And so they already love what you're doing. It's going to take a while for that potential donor to understand you, to start giving, and to start giving at the same level. But as long as you understand that they've got the same capacity and same potential as your donor, that makes a, that makes a big difference. So I'd recommend that... Um, you know, using, using the referral system and just really test where people's comfort level is. Um, if, if they feel comfortable in picking up the phone and setting up an appointment and going to lunch with you, great. If they feel more comfortable uh, with just writing a letter or an email uh, to that friend, then just do that. Uh, but it's always important that you, um, you make, them, make sure that they're feeling comfortable and, uh, and, and work, work things out with them that way. Now, one of the things that I found over the years is that people can sometimes freeze up when it comes to names of individuals. So I always take with me a church directory. I take with me a list of pre-compiled names of individuals, ask them if they know those people. If we're connected in organizations um, such as a wrestling club or a social club or a, a business organization. We go to the same church together. 
uh, bring those bring those those directories with you and um, and and ask the people you know who on this list do you know well enough that you'd be willing to introduce me to and those seem to be the best way to go uh, with regard to that so sue i hope that helped you and was helpful for everyone well that ends our broadcast for today i'm so excited that you were able to join us and please remember that this is a production of development of effectiveness strategies please go out to our channel because we've got a lot of helpful videos out there and uh, also too uh, i really enjoy your fundraising questions so please go out on twitter and uh, use the hashtag jim and java at uh, dev f strats on twitter uh, you can you can also email us at development effectiveness m at gmail.com and as always i hope you will increase your income and reach the goal of being fully funded thank you <music>